What's going on smart people? Kelly and I just finished moving into a new apartment and now it is time to get back to work and making videos again. Uh, so recently I put out a post asking for resource recommendations for learning string theory and that was met with suggestions of resources of course but also a bit of why why would you do that why would you want to learn string theory so i wanted to use this video as a chance to kind of address that so why do i want to learn string theory well first and foremost the nudge that i needed to finally start looking into it was simon clark's recent video where he talks about learning quantum field theory and i think he uh he really inspired a lot of us to finally pull the trigger on learning that topic or that skill that we've just been putting off so what I'm getting at is if this goes horribly, it was Simon Clark's fault. Let me actually move over here so that I can steal parts thing as well. So to give the mandatory description of string theory that you know, you've probably heard a million times, string theory is an attempt at unifying the two big pillars of fundamental physics. Einstein's theory of gravity, which is general relativity, and the standard model, which is comprised of a bunch of quantum field theories that describe the other fundamental interactions of nature. Needless to say, the prerequisites being a working knowledge of both general relativity and quantum field theory is a pretty tall order. So part of the reason I want to learn string theory is because I finally think I might be able to. As a bit of a background, so I'm currently doing my PhD in theoretical nuclear and particle physics. Every calculation I do uses quantum field theory, so I, I have a pretty reasonable understanding of it. I'm still by no means an expert in any stretch of the imagination, but I do know my way around page 807 of Peskin and Schroeder, or at least that's the only page I use. As for general relativity, I made my lecture series on tensor calculus, which ended with Einstein's field equations, and I also took a graduate course with Kelly uh, in general relativity. So as far as prereqs go, I think I'm there. Now for the other reason, you know, I've met world-renowned experts in nuclear and particle theory who never learned GR never learned general relativity, and of course astronomers who never learned quantum field theory aside from maybe a small subset of cosmologists. And this isn't because they can't learn both, I suspect it's because it's difficult to justify spending that much time learning a topic that you're never going to use. That sounds a lot like gen eds in US institutions now that I'm saying that out loud. But, you know, the, the nuclear theorist is probably never going to need GR in their calculations. And I imagine the same goes for an astronomer in quantum field theory. My situation is different for two reasons. The first is that I also make videos so I can pretty much justify spending time on learning whatever I want as long as it's related to physics. And the second thing is for my research, I'm interested in an object that shows up in both general relativity and quantum field theory, which is the energy momentum tensor. So for one small aspect of my research, I have to look at quantum field theory done in curved space-time, which is different from quantum gravity, even though it sounds like worse than splitting hairs. So I actually just had to buy this book, uh, Aspects of Quantum Field Theory in Curved Space-Time. This is not sponsored by a book written in, in 1989, I promise. But my mind does have to go to gravity every, every now and then. But the point that I'm getting at with this, and maybe this is anecdotal, but it seems pretty uncommon for a physicist to learn both general relativity and quantum field theory. Which begs the question, if most people, most physicists don't have the prereqs to learn string theory, why is it that so many people have such strong opinions about it, such strong criticism? And I think the obvious point is, well, some people are just full of shit and talk out of their ass, but that's not entirely fair because you don't have to know how an iPhone was built to tell when it's not working properly. Right? The experimental nuclear physicist doesn't have to know the subtleties of an intermediate step in a theory calculation to see if a model prediction agrees with experiment or not. So from a phenomenological or experimental side of things, I, I get where that kind of criticism can come from. You don't have to know all the details to see if the end result is consistent. But as a theorist, you know, if, if I want to form my own opinion about a theory, I want to check out what's under the hood. And I think that captures the thesis of this video. I want to form my own conclusions of string theory. I don't want my opinion to just be parroting someone else's. So I reached out to David Tong, the father of all of those wonderful lecture notes on various topics in physics. I asked if he'd mind if I'd make videos on his lecture notes on string theory, which came very highly recommended from you all. And he gave me the thumbs up. So I don't know if I'm gonna be making these edited videos going through his lecture notes, or if they will be live streams and more interactive, going through exercises, things like that. 
that. Uh, I'll have to think about that, see what works better. But I'm so excited to finally start jumping into this. I first heard about string theory almost exactly 10 years ago when I was working as a dishwasher at an Italian restaurant. Sounds like a Billy Joel song or something. So I guess you could say it took me 10 years for 10 dimensions, but I'm, I'm so excited to start getting into this. Let me know in the comment section if you are as well, and I'll see you guys there.